Hi there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and this cluster of programs that you see in front of you is a comparison study. So rather than talk for too long, I just thought I'd get right into it because hopefully you can use this as a business case or an example for how you can use this in your company. So in this case, I've got Rhino inside and I've got Rhino inside open inside Revit. So I'm obtaining the exact same site geometry and property boundary that I'm obtaining in my study in this Revit model as well. In this Revit model, I'm in Revit 2021, so I have the generative design tool available and I've set up a Dynamo study. So both studies are targeting the same thing. They're trying to find the best view aspect for a building positioned on the site. We're randomizing the position on the site and also the size of the building and the height is dictated by the width and the depth. So the smaller the footprint, the taller the building can be. So we're gonna run both at the same time and compare not only the speed, but also the results that we receive and how meaningful they are. Now, obviously we're solving things in two different ways. We're using a randomization solver in the case of the generative design tool. And in the case of Galapagos, we're using an evolutionary solver. So the evolutionary solver targets one solution. The randomization solution will give us a field to work through. So it's sort of a fair comparison in some ways, maybe not. But we're gonna to try to compare them as fairly as possible. So I have a view study ready to go here in Revit. I've got a randomization study targeting 200 solutions and I'm randomizing my three variables, my position on the site as a UV coordinate and my building size and I'm collecting my context and my boundary. On the other side over here, so in the red corner, <laughs> in the blue corner, <laughs> if it's a showdown, um, we have Galapagos ready to run a maximization study for the yield on the site. Now for anyone that watched my original Revit video, I have reduced the, the value of the views. So these scripts are working the same way. They're seeing the views no matter what level they're on as the same value. So it's just the most number of views you can get through all these buildings. So let's start running them. So I'm gonna start running this one first because it's gonna get in the way of Galapagos. But Galapagos is pretty fast, so it probably you know doesn't really worry too much about not having a head start. So in this case, I'm gonna switch Galapagos to show you all the genomes because it's generating all of these randomly. So I'm gonna hit generate and I'm gonna quickly try and get this out of the way because it gets in the way. And as soon as this begins, I'm gonna hit start solver in Galapagos. Bang, all right, and they're off. So you can see obviously that the speed of Galapagos is different, it's much faster. But I'm only seeing one overall result, so I'm tracking the evolution of my solution. Um, in the generative design tool, I'm generating up to 300 options. You can see I'm at, currently at option 80, and these are all being stored for the user to review. So I can sort them by score, and I can just sort them in descending. So I get my best results first. So I get a more dynamic way to interact with my results, whereas I've seen Galapagos, and you can, you can see it's hit a pretty stable result there. I'm getting an evolutionary outcome, so I'm seeing the, the alpha result, the one that got the best outcome. It's interesting too that if we do try to sort by score, we're getting sort of different results out of Revit. We're not necessarily getting the exact same position on the site. We can see in this case that we're actually getting different positions on the site. So the results we're getting are a little bit more random. So we do need to sort of filter through our values here. Let's look at just the absolute best score. What do these typically look like? And you can see we're getting pretty different locations. In this case, you can see we do have one that is you know, pretty, pretty slender. Um, in this case, maybe we should filter it down a little bit by the size. Maybe these are a little bit too tall. So we'll just focus on some that are a little bit more fair. So we'll just clear the filters and we're just gonna have a look at some lower results. We're gonna keep going until we get a bit lower. Okay, we're getting around about the right height now. Let's just have a look at one of them and just look at the scale. Okay, we're still a little bit too tall. Uh, now we're getting a little bit closer. Let's just work with, with these values. This is looking around about the same height as the optimized site. So this is a bit more fair. So let's even try to find the same result. Um, there we go. So that, that's, that's pretty close to our optimized result that's come out of Galapagos. So we can see that we are getting some serum similarities, but what we have found is we actually do have quite a lot of results that can yield a very similar outcome a very similar quantity of views. So Galapagos have only really returned one stable evolutionary result. The generative design tool has given us multiple options, which are all returning a pretty similar yield. Um, so we can actually see that sometimes a randomization process will return more results. 
Now there are, there are other solvers you can use alternatively to Galapagos, um, such as Wallaceae, Opossum, Octopus, etc. They're, they're much more complicated to pilot. That is one of the comparison points that does make the generative design tool quite useful in the fact that it's very easy to operate, it's very easy to filter, and it's very easy to understand. Now Galapagos, to a, to a user that doesn't understand generative design, that probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to me. I wouldn't understand what I'm looking at. I wouldn't know what to make of the results. It can be quite confusing. One great thing about this tool is it does package the results for you in a more clean format. So that is, that is worth considering. Um, I obviously could have compared something like Wallaceye, but I think the average skill level of most people using generative design isn't at that level. They're usually, usually looking for something a little bit more like these programs that are a bit more basic and simple because most generative studies try not to go too over the top from what I've experienced. We try to keep the parameters simple and the outputs clear. Um, so hopefully that's helped give, and give you a bit of a benchmark between the two and sort of compare how the two work and the sort of results you can expect to get out of them and maybe encourage you to use one or the other because I encourage you to try both. And remember that I'm running this inside Revit using Rhino inside. So I'm not comparing Rhino to Revit, I'm comparing Revit to Revit. It's just using different tools. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you're not already following and subscribing my channel, feel free to do so. I make videos usually two times a week and plan to do so for a long time. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos where we'll cover similar workflows like this. So thanks, take care, bye.